And we're live. Hello and welcome to another live demonstration. If you're in the chat, just say hi, or if you've got any questions, Gary will either answer them for, for me or call out and I'll see if I can help you. So March and a bit of madness is in the air. So subject is a Mad March hair. I'm going to be using watercolour pencils. These are artist quality, so they have a great pigment load. And I'm going to be doing lots of layering um, so you can see the full potential of them. Right, first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to start with the eye because I'm going to do lots of different styles as I progress around the shape of the hair but the eye is going to be pretty clean so there will be some looser um, lines further around but this is clean so I'm just going to put colour on and they have really big pupils that's brown I've not put the black on yet just putting colour on. If I put black on too soon, you find that it, it's, you've gone in too dark. It's much easier to put colour on, they just take it off. Okay, so great watercolour pencils, you can move them with water. Okay. You can see why I put the brown on. This is just a first layer. It's all a bit muddy at the moment, but it will get brighter. And then I can start to build up around so they have a nice dark line around the eye. Again some colour in there. Now the paper I'm using is a toned paper. It's a, it's not a watercolour paper, it's a drawing paper. So with a lot of water it may cockle and buckle but I'm not planning on putting a lot of water on. This is going to be a case of building up the layers. But because this is water based, I can also lift off if I want to. But I need to let it dry. Then I'll get the full potential of that colour. So while that's drying, let's just put some colour on the page using the edge of the pencil. Just sketch out the shape. Goes up there and around there. Black tip. So this is a hair. You can tell a hair from a rabbit a lot by the size. Hairs are a lot bigger usually than rabbits and also have these much longer ears and apparently rabbits hop and hairs skip because they have much longer hind legs. Using one colour to put on to start with just going to put a colour on. It's going to be quite loose, so nice arm, got strong arms, and in this great image which I have got from a copyright free site 
he looks like he's ready to box in that classic male stance when you see them facing each other off for dominance during the mating season. Going to look scruffy. And on this image, I actually can't see the feet, so I'm going to suggest that really long feet they have. Okay. Right. Put a colour in there. Colour down the leg, which I've made quite thin, so I've thickened that out a bit. And that will do for now. First colour. It's going to be a lot of layering. So adding water. I'm using a big brush because I want it to look a little bit painterly. Not a lot of colour on this at the moment. I'm going to have to, I was going to say hop around the drawing, but that was an unintentional pun because I'm going to have to work on areas and let them dry. So this is going into the wet. This is a little more difficult Put some colour up here than it is dry. So you can see there the difference. So that is wet. I'm putting colour on and it is taking the colour and that's putting it on dry. So you may want to put the dry on first. I'm going to build up the layers. Lovely velvety nose. And put some more colour on. See the eye now is lightened as well from the initial colour I have put on. So this is going to be a mix of a painterly effect as well as a much more pencil effect. I don't want to hide the fact I've used a watercolour pencil. So I was looking up the differences between rabbits and hares. One difference is that baby hares or leverets are actually born fully hair and their eyes open, whereas baby rabbits, kittens or kits are um, naked and blind. They're part of the rodent family. Um, and rabbits and hares are, they share a lot of similarities, but they are a different species, very much similar to a goat and a sheep. So goat and sheep are closely related. I thought you meant they were related to goats. No, <laughs> so I, I let me, I was finishing. Sorry. So yes, no. Goats and sheep are, sheep are very closely related. So are hares and rabbits, but they all have their very distinct differences. And Mad March Hare really does mean what it says. They tend, the males tend to get possessive over their, over book, books, males over does during early spring. And you'll see them boxing, which is why this is a really nice stand. So that's orange. Again, another layer. It's drying quite quickly, which is great. But look now, much stronger. Colour. Very painterly. Just moving the pigment around. 
don't want the brush too wet, so dab that off. That's now going to mix with the orange and to see how that orange is bringing out colour. It's looking quite nice as it is. Okay. Right. I can go into the eye now. Because I want the rest of it to dry, I'm going to skip around it a little bit. Bring the key features in the eye. And I'll bring back, back that pupil. Goes down like that, round. Same on this side. Actually, you can see some lashes on that side. So these must have lashes here. Darker brown, let's start to darken in the ear. Might use the black while I'm here. So tip of these ears are black. Comes down. Much darker in here. Darken off the sides of the ears. Cross hatching to put the colour on. And then blend it with a brush. Black is quite black, so it's quite strong. Using the brush to create shapes. Do the same this side. Again, little tip black. And a lot of this is brown and ochre colour. Again, just blend it. I will work back into this. But I'm moving down as the paper's drying. So let's add some darks, definitely under the eye here. Over the eye, it's got a light patch, but it's quite dark there. See how that eye started to ping out now. doesn't have to be neat because at the moment I'm just blending the colour. You can see there, still see some of that ochre and orange I put on previously underneath. Move down. Ah, black. Put black down. Start to work, and I notice that the fur goes around over the back. So you use that shape quite dark at the bottom here, so much more colour. I'm putting colour on, I'm not yet thinking about it being fur like. In the moment, it's a case of getting colour on and getting the base layers, base colours on. I will, in the end, start to put 
some different colours, a bit of blues and a bit of purples. Again, blend this. If you use the watercolour paper, you may find that you'll get a much smoother transition of colour because it's designed to take the wetting and any brush marks and scumbling over the surface, whereas this is a drawing paper. But for me, it, I did find it worked pretty well. Look at that colour. Keeping my brush damp, not wet. I'm also thinking about light, so there are some light areas and I don't want to cover them too much. Okay. Right, let's go back again. So back up here, can, it's still a bit damp but it's just getting there. So now I can start to put some more colour on and I'm doing this on purpose I'm really skipping around and doing lots of layers because I, I want you to see the full potential of watercolour pencils often I see they put one colour on and they don't do a lot of mixing or it can look a little flat when actually you can really work them for a much painterly effect white's lovely look at that just adding that little bit of white in, in the ear here so it's showing it's got pencil it's a pencil as well as blending it with the water Dogs again. I can pick up the black now. I put it down because I was forgetting I had it in my hand. See now how I'm building up the layers and how I've been more controlled about where I put some of the colour. And that's the effect I was looking for, that nice pencil, but also with the painterly effect on it. Still a bit damp, I can feel that. All right, in with that white. And you can see how the white works really nicely against this toned paper. It makes the white stand out. Right, now I can also start to bring out some colour, but like I said, I'm also going to add a bit of blue. And a bit of purple. You'll see when it finishes how this works. Pencils facing the same way. This way. A bit more colour. Still a bit too wet. I can feel it's not putting colour down, it's not taking it really well. A bit too wet at the moment, which is why I'm working my way down this way right, into the eye. The nose has a clear line there. And a bit of blue. A bit of purple. Look at 
those colours, aren't they? Lovely. And they do work. And the oranges are really... There's a bit of brightness. So there's not really any plans now as I work down to add water um, in the face. I'm just going to show that these can be used like a normal pencil. Might actually have said I wasn't going to use water, but because I want the nose to be a little softer, I might just blend that. See if I can. Oh, yes, I am going to put some colour on because it makes those blues and purples sing a little bit more with, when you add water to them. Look at that purple, it just really pings out now. this side okay. right I like those colors I like colours I have in there. So this should be dry. Yes, that's definitely much drier now. I can easily put a little bit more colour down into the chest and the arm. So a little bit of purple. and orange. So the hair is brown, but it doesn't mean as an artist you have to keep it just a brown hair. You've got all these beautiful colours. And I don't think they are taking away anything from the colour. You can still see the hair. And yes, there's a bit of blue here and there. But I think it's really fun to add colour. As you see it, you're the artist. This is your work. And I want you to sh see the full potential of watercolour pencil because I think they're overlooked a little bit. Right, let's bring this down into here. Go down. I've not really done the hand, so let me. Do hairs have hands? I think they're hands, aren't they? Boxing gloves, aren't they? Boxing gloves, hairs with boxing gloves. I to darken this into the chest because the arms will be creating shadow. Okay. 
Definitely under here. I'm working quite loose and sketchy. Wait till the end. Then I'm really going to have fun with these pencils because they are still water movable at any time. So you can move them and blend them and even lift some of the colour at any stage during the process. They're not going to be fixed. Okay. Oh, don't like that shape, but a bit more. Again, what colours have to use? Have you just working my way around with this darker? So the leg comes up here. He's standing tall on his hindquarters. I am now considering and thinking about a little bit of the direction I can see the hair is going. So across here, the, it's coming around like that across his back. It's going up a lot shorter in the leg. So, um, Tattle this leg yet. It's quite thin there, I don't think it should be. And like I say, I can't actually see the bottom of the feet, but I'm going to suggest where they are. Nice white belly that comes round here and I think it drops down there as well. Right, I've left this bit, and that's because it needs to have some light. Put some light on the hands. Paws. Rabbits have paws. Not a rabbit. Oh yeah. Hairs have paws. Thank you for reminding me. Yeah. I don't want to smudge it too much. I don't want to just make it very muddy, which is a risk. I do want the colours to pop. Right. Let's um, start to darken. Quite long paws, and you can see the claw as well. A bit 
flattened, bit shaped. Okay. So you can see how I'm reshaping as I'm watching. Bring that down. I think this is possibly a bit too wet still. I'll come back to that. So this, you can see, I think, claw there goes round. And put some white on there. Dark brown. I think I need some blue. Some orange. Also seeing, not sure I'm happy with this shape. It's fine, let's move down. And darken. It's much drier now, I can definitely feel. The pencil is much easier to put on the page. Orange. Okay, let's bring this down here. I think a little bit of blue. Again, I haven't worked on this area yet. So let's blend that with the. I could have just left it very painterly, which I, I do like this very loose painterly, but I want to show you how you can use layers. And this brush is great because it's, you're not too fussy. Plus, if it's dry or damp, not overly wet, you also get this lovely texture, which is part of the reason I've chosen this brush because I know I'm going to get really focused on being detailed but that's not what I want to achieve okay definitely need some more color in this leg Nice there. Bring some purple in. Lights on there, so I need to add some white there. Put some dark down here. Layering again just to get a little bit more pink into the tail because that just doesn't want to be a white splotch just sitting there not really being part of the story so but it's in my hand right, feet I'm going to suggest Don't know what they really look like, but I know they're very long. And 
some light and light in this. Look at that, how it went over the purple. That's lovely. It's catching some light there. Let's strengthen this a little bit. It goes. Needs a bit of colour so it's not just plain white. So this leg also needs a little bit more. How's that looking? And yes, I've purposely left the feet not really saying anything because that will kind of explain itself in the final stages. Right, now I can put some white on. Plus whiskers, must remember whiskers tend to forget whiskers because I'm trying to get everything else on. And then I remember whiskers because they're usually the last thing you put on. So what I can do Possibly not easy. Let's try it on here. There you go. Can you see that, Gary? You can now with the camera. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's my brush gun. I'm going to, you can use watercolour pencils, same way as you would do a paint. So put some onto a palette. That palette wasn't taking it easily. So you possibly need a plastic palette or something. This is quite handy because I can see it, especially with the white. You can lift it. It's can be like a paint. So for much stronger a lot of pigment, loads of white. Pick that up, mix it. Water soluble pencils, this really does show what a water soluble pencil is. can use it like that with a brush. So that's another way of using these pencils. So they're great for travel because you've got all those possibilities of colour and getting things down quickly, which you can do with water if you have it. If not, just get the values down and then come back to it. You could take a water pen. You could take a water pen and I was going to use a water pen but I wanted the finer detail and I wanted to use this brush because that's just perfect for the fur. But instead of taking wet paint with you, you've got all the possibilities and textures you can get from a watercolour pencil. Right. Okay. Going to put a little bit of greenery just so he's standing on something. And again, bring some of that colour. And hopefully this works. Just put some colour on there. Look how that pings. But that's not what I was saying about, I hope this works, this. What I hope works. 
have a little bit of fun. Like I said, it's movable still. You can still move the colour. You don't have to stick to the lines. Add a bit of movement. Oh, whiskers, still not done the whiskers. Bit of action. I know it doesn't look much at the moment, but once it's dried, you can see what's moved. and whiskers I'm going to need to do whiskers so another thing you can do is you can take color from your core and do it that way one thing i would suggest is you don't dip the pencil into water because you then allow the wood to get wet and it can get squishy and not hold the core anymore but if you're careful, you're just taking colour from the end of your pencil. Oh, whiskers remembered. Well done. I know, I do forget. Huge whiskers. Again, is there any whiter areas? It does seem a lot stronger straight from the core. Tiny brush. A few final touches to finish. Under here needs slightly darkening because it's underneath. Then I think I'm happy. Okay, so a little bit of a Mad March hair using watercolour pencils. And I've tried to show you a number of different techniques um, just to make it a little bit of fun for the upcoming spring. And I thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed that and join me again soon for another demonstration. <laughs>